All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, double honors to the apostles and elders of a great millstone who are my teachers. All right, peace and salutations to you brothers out there preaching this word in truth and sincerity. This is Brother Yahweh Shai with another lesson. Uh, and the title of this one is going to be, Why is Life uh, Tumultuous? All right, and I have that uh, definition tumultuous here. And it says, full of bustle or confusion, disorderly, turbulent. All right, and the reason why... I was inspired to do this lesson uh is because i was talking to a co-worker man and they were pretty much they were complaining about life and one of the questions that they had asked was you know well you know why is life like this why is life this way you know why do we have to do this and so i wanted to go ahead and uh see <clears throat> if i can clear that up through the scriptures all right so for my pray for my first precept i want to jump to the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 and I'm going to start right at verse 15 and it reads, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And that's right. And so what we can deduce from this precept is that whenever you disobey the heavenly father's laws, statutes and commandments, the laws of life, then you will be cursed. All right. And so and this is mainly speaking. Well, this is speaking to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and North American Indians, you true biblical Israelites. But through our people not following this word, then the whole the whole earth was cast into a curse. All right. And so it says, verse 16, curse shalt thou be in the city and curse shalt thou be in the field. That's right. So no matter where you go, whether you're downtown or whether you're out in the boondocks, you know, these curses will follow you. And so it says, "Curse shall be the basket, shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, at the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So, curse shall be thy basket and thy store. But you know, you try to set up a business, all right? You try to make some money. You know, you're you're constantly going to be having things that are that are hindering you. You know, whether it's taxes, you know, whether you have bills to pay." There's going to be things that that is taking that is taking your money your and uh, the the increase of what you have from you. It says, "Curse shall thou be, curse shall be the fruit of thy body." All right, you have a lot of Jake who are having trouble, you know, having children. And even though our people are still the most fruitful upon the land, you know, <clears throat> our people are still under these curses to where they have trouble. Um, producing these children man you know they go and they get abortions they go and they they um can't get pregnant whether it whether it's uh something to do with their with their uh, body you know this is all a curse that's come, that came upon us from on high and so it says and the fruit of thy land the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep so no matter what no matter what it is you know you try to plant you try to you try to grow some uh some fruit some veggies you try to you try to do these things it's going to be cursed all right you may you may have to try two three four times before you're able to get it right all right and so it says verse 19 curse shall shalt thou be when thou comest in and curse shalt thou be when thou goest out so once again no matter where you go you know these curses are going to follow you and so it says verse 20 the lord yahweh shall send upon thee cursing vexation and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness whereby thou hast forsaken me and it says uh, all right and the reason i started off with this precept is because when you separate yourself from the laws of life then life itself starts working against you all right and this, this is what we're seeing amongst the whole world you know you see this whole alphabet movement you see the you see esau edom building up thermonuclear capability which can destroy the whole world all right you you have um you you have uh, all this radiation going out this pollution and it's because you so-called negroes latinos and north american indians have forsaken the ways of life because really our people are supposed to be on top all right as it tells you in deuteronomy 14 you know the lord had chosen us to be above the nations but because our people went off and they decided to go in the ways of death then that's why this life is, is is tumultuous you know it's full of confusion you really don't know if you're going down the right path you know the only way that you're able to know really is if you take heed unto the law statutes commandments of the heavenly father which is what we also see the 
brothers doing, man? The, the elect, you know, how I read as I'm part of that number. We're seeing this ministry go out worldwide. And through that ministry is, is this being revealed. So from here, I want to jump to the book of Second Ezra. Chapter 7 and verse 11. And it says, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. And what was decreed that now is done? Let's jump to the book of Genesis. Chapter three and jumping down to verse 17. And it reads, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. And that's why people, you know, they they are starting to really lose that um, that joy, that spunk that they once had in all these ho these holidays, man, and all these festivals. All right. And all that joy is starting to be taken away. All right. And it says in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. And this was a curse that was brought upon the whole world. Whenever Adam transgressed the, the law, statutes, commandments, as we just read in the book of second Ezra, then that was decree, which now is done. And so it says, verse 18, which is the point thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And so it says, in the, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Meaning that you're going to have to work to eat, to, uh, to prosper. You're going to have to put in, uh, you're going to have to put in all manner of, of labor in order to be, in a sense, um, increased. All right, because beforehand the earth was made a paradise. All right, whenever Adam and Eve and, and the people bef with him were placed upon the planet earth, there wasn't any thorns or thistles. Those were actually curses. These are a curse that was brought upon the whole planet. All right, and so this is another example of what we see. You know, when you separate yourself from the Heavenly Father, all right, when you separate yourselves from the laws of life, you know, then automatically death starts working in you. And that's why the scriptures say that uh, you sin lieth at the door. And, it, and that's because whenever you disobey the Heavenly Father's commandments, all right, then automatically the, you're going to start living the ways of death. All right, because what he gave us were the laws of life. As a matter of fact, this wasn't a, a precept that I wanted to get, but this is uh, relevant. This is the book of Baruch chapter 2. See, this is a real good one. I want to jump right to the point, though. It might be chapter three, but we shall bear with me. All right, yeah. This is the uh, book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 9. And he reads, Hear Israel the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. How happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. All right. And so you have Baruch here saying, you know, hear Israel, the commandments of life give ear to the understand wisdom. And so the reason why this is being said is because right now you see our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, North American Indians living a life full of bondage, full of full of death, full of sorrow. And it's because you are not listening. You're not you're not giving ear to the commandments of life. All right. If anything, you're you're giving heed unto the ways of death. All right. You have made a covenant, you know, Jeremiah 16. And so it says, <clears throat> verse 11, that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. 
For if thou hadst walked in the way of Yahweh, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. So if you had you have hearkened unto the law, statutes, commandments of the Heavenly Father, then we should have been at peace. Adam would have never failed. All right, we would never have uh, tasted that the the sting of death. You know, because through through sin is you know sin, the sting of death is is sin. All right, because once you sin, then that separates you from the Heavenly Father, which puts you in that mode of having to repent, having to turn back. And that's the mode that we're that all of us are in, all you Israelites. All right. And so it says, verse 14, learn where with where, so like you, verse 14, learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding that thou mayest know also where is length of days and life where is the light of the eyes and peace and so in order to learn these ways you have to take heed unto the law statutes and commandments of the heavenly father and overall through faith you have to have faith that what the heavenly father said was going to happen is going to happen all right and that's the problem with uh, with our people is that they didn't believe the heavenly father you know whenever when moses was taking them out of egypt and they went through the wilderness what did they start doing they started murmuring against the heavenly father started doubting all right and through that doubt they there were serpents sent unto them all right but the heavenly father even then the heavenly father was delivering them con constantly trying to show them that if you just believe and you have faith in him and that hey no, no harm can touch you all right and so and so far we can deduce that when the most high tells you to do something it's imperative that we hearken since his ways are just all right any other way outside of the heavenly father is as we see you know is the ways of death and so this is going to be the book of psalms chapter 89 and i'm gonna jump right down to the point in verse 14 justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne mercy and truth shall be go before thy face blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk O Yahweh, in the light of thy countenance that's right and so justice justice and judgment are the habitation of Yahweh's throne you know so anything outside of that you know you're you're going to be lied to you might you you might get caught up in some type of um um con confrontation with the with the heathens with the wicked of this world you know hey the heavenly father will have it to where he uh he will deliver you into the hand of of the wicked to for your destruction for so that way you can know that he is all right as the scriptures say be as the scriptures say so like you be still and know that i am yahweh all right and the reason we have to be still is because when you go through certain trials and tribulations what that is supposed to do is it's supposed to humble you and we actually you know that's the spirit we actually went over this during camp this previous you know this previous week and um you know the the trials and tribulations that you go through is supposed to humble you down and supposed to teach you that there is a god up above that there is a creator in the heavens that is watching you and seeing how you're going to turn out and if you decide to disobey and you decide to forsake the uh the laws of life hey well then all these things will come upon you matter of fact another quick precept which this is one that we had brought out during a uh, during camp but it's it's a beautiful precept this is the book of Sirach chapter 40 and uh i'm gonna start at verse nine and it says death and bloodshed strife and sword calamities famine tribulation and the scourge these things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood that's right so these things were created for the wicked for what for admonishment for for uh for um correction matter of fact let me see if i can get that for correction I know it's in the uh, it's in the apocrypha. All right, this is uh, 
the book of Sirach chapter 16 and verse 12. As is as his mercy is great, so is his correction. Also, he judges a man according to his works. And that seems very fair to me. You know, if you're if you're doing things that are contrary to what the heavenly father told you, then it's only right that he punishes you and and brings affliction upon you. But if you're doing things that the heavenly father told you to do then isn't it isn't it seem right that the heavenly father blesses you and brings these good things upon you and that's what he actually told that's what he actually told um Cain you know if thou doest right then shouldn't shouldn't thou be uh accepted matter of fact this is the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 6 and Yahweh said unto Cain why art thou why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. And that's a beautiful thing as well. Because it says, sin, if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Because if you are not hearkening unto the heavenly father all right then you're susceptible to the to the wiles of the devil you're susceptible to the to the wickedness of this world all right because we understand that the most high is good all right the scriptures say yahweh Shai says that there is none good but but that the one that is in heaven which is my father yahweh you know <clears throat> roughly paraphrasing and let's go ahead and get that word accepted if i may and i pray that this lesson is connecting so far and so when you get that word accepted, it's a shayath, which means elevation, exaltation, dignity, swelling up, rising. It says dignity, exaltation, loftiness. And let's get that word exaltation. Exaltation. Position of a planet in the zodiac where it exerts its greatest influence. Enhancement, elevation. All right, elevation, pride to raise, elevate. There we go. And so, whenever you, whenever you hearken unto the heavenly Father and you are you are accepted, a hey, within well, the heavenly Father will raise you up. All right, and he will give you he will give you blessings. All right, and he will uh, uh, show you the ways of life. You know, uh, of course, assuming that you are not only called but chosen, and that you are an Israelite. All right, and so from here, I want to jump to the book of Isaiah chapter 24 I'm going to jump down to verse 4 and it reads the earth mourneth and fadeth away the world languisheth and fadeth away the haughty people of the earth do languish all right and whenever you get it get that word languish all right it means to be weak to droop to languish to be exhausted to uh pass part participle to be weak to droop to, to be or grow feeble and the reason for that is it tells you in verse 5 verse is so isaiah 24 and verse 5 the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws changed the ordinance broken the everlasting covenant therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left all right and so because the earth is defiled thereof because they have transgressed the laws they have broken the order uh, broken the everlasting covenants and changed the ordinances you know saying that that a, a man can sleep with a man that a woman is over a man that a child is over a man all right that there is no god all right because of all these these uh these false sayings then now the earth is defiled all right and when you get that word defiled it means profaned polluted corrupt all right godless and so we're seeing a godless society asking well why is why is life why is life tumultuous why is life so hard well the reason why life is like this why life is tumultuous is because the earth is defiled that they, they have transgressed the laws they have separated themselves from the heavenly father and through that we're starting to see these curses devour the earth and pretty soon under Esau Edom's rulership, uh, a whole a whole land is going to be destroyed from off the face of the planet forever by thermonuclear fire, and that land is known as America, Babylon the Great in the scriptures. All right, and so you know, with that, <clears throat> it's therefore we see that in order to gain life, we have to come under the one who created it. All right, and so with that, I want to go ahead 
and uh, jump to the book of Sirach, or Salakia, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and jumping down to verse 13, says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So the whole duty of man, the reason why man was placed upon the earth, was to fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. We were set on the planet to take care of the planet. And through disobeying, through separation of, of us from the Heavenly Father, <clears throat> then all these curses have been devouring the earth. And now we're seeing the wicked in rulership uh, destroying the earth. All right, and that's why it tells you in the book of Romans 8 that the whole earth uh, uh, is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And the reason for that being is because these sons of Yahweh are going to be um, following after the ways of life. And through following after the ways of life, they're going to inherit a kingdom everlasting, just as Yahweh Shai did by following after the ways of life, preaching the kingdom. All right. And, and following the commandments, telling the disciples to follow the commandments and showing your love towards the heavenly father by by showing faith. And in order to show you faith, you have to do the works. All right. That's what that's what Yahweh was doing. He was he was on the earth telling our people to repent and to turn back because now we're seeing this whole world on in, in a in a gross darkness in chaos. All right. And so it says, verse 14, for Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So all things are going to be made manifest before the heavenly father. Whenever he comes to judge the earth, all these things are going to be made known. The, earth, the truth um, is going to flourish. A and 144. All right. And so the whole duty of man is to serve him, Yahweh, with our whole heart. Then shall we live. All right. And with that being said, you know, I want to go ahead and end it off on this. This is going to be the book of Psalms, chapter three and verse eight. And it says, but thou, O Yahweh, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto Yahweh with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. Salah, I laid me down and slept. I awaked for Yahweh sustained me. And so we understand that the, the Heavenly Father will sustain us as, as long as we trust in him and we believe in not only the blessings that he will bring upon us, but also the cursings. You know, we have to believe in him wholeheartedly. The whole the whole conclusion of a man is to the whole conclusion is that the do the whole duty of a man is to serve Yahweh and fear him. And if you don't fear him and you don't serve him, then all these all these curses will come upon you and devour you. And uh, that's what we're seeing upon the planet Earth. So with that being said, I pray this lesson was edifying and uplifting. And once again, I want to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who are my teachers. Peace and salutations to you brothers out there preaching this word in truth and sincerity. And, and shalom to you Akwathium out there who are listening and learning. With that, now, to the next time I say, shalom.